Hello YouTube, I'm Juicy Jones and this is Juicy Jones Global Orbiting Vaping Headquarters. Today we're going to talk about DIY, do-it-yourself nicotine e-liquid for your atomizer. This is one of my juices. So, DIY, do it yourself. <clears throat> E-liquid, nicotine, why do you want to do that? The biggest number one reason that people want to come and do their own juices is cost. The reason is that you can pay as much money as you want to for e-liquid, and after a while it starts adding up. And the good news is you can continue to buy those expensive special edition, uh, special holiday juices, all the good ones that are desirable in your friends are talking about. You can get a bottle or two of those still, but you don't have to rely on those for your all day vape. The truth is, <clears throat> you can copy some of those flavors, almost all of them, and make them at home for half a dollar a bottle. And I'm talking about a big bottle. So it's much, much, much less expensive to make it yourself sometimes half a dollar. The other reason is choice. You literally have the choice of any flavor you want, any way you want it. If you like it less sweet, you can have that. If you like it more sweet, you can have that. If you want it with lower nicotine levels, which is something that I always do, <clears throat> then you can have that. Or if you need higher nicotine levels, that's fine too. Throughout the process, you're the one who has all the control over what happens with your with your uh, e-liquid, and that's just totally great. It's also incredibly fun to experiment with the flavors and to get one right and to turn that into your all-day vape, and it's just a really nice process. And, uh, even the process of experimentation, where you lose some of these materials, you still end up saving money on your e-juice in the end. And so I, in fact, have money to buy the raw materials and go out and buy bottles, and uh, I'm just spending a lot less, less money. Some of the things I ought to tell you before we start is that general caveat, I have to tell you this every time, is that nicotine is dangerous. And nicotine is a chemical that you have to handle carefully, and uh, it's well understood how to, and I'll show you some techniques we use in our house to make it safe for us. And um, really, you should just always treat it with the utmost respect and try to keep it out and open as little as possible and uh, keep it in the fridge. And uh, just follow some basic guidelines that I'll show you as we go and we mix. It's pretty easy. Uh, the other thing is that when you're experimenting with DIY or doing DIY, write it down. The difference between science and fucking around is writing it down. So if your recipe is a little bit off, then if you wrote, if you wrote down exactly what you did, or if you used e liquid Dash recipes.com, then it keeps track of your recipes. Then you'll know that maybe you put a little too much in, a little too little of this, and you can make little adjustments and know exactly what you're doing, and then arrive at that perfect, delicious DIY vape you'll be so stoked about. So, if I didn't say so already, I want to make sure that you at least start by having an account at e-liquid recipes.com. I'll put a URL down there so you don't have to remember. The reason is because that's a great place to start just to see other people's recipes, to find out about what ingredients they use. And you can find out from other users which ingredients from which manufacturers are mixed at certain percentages that they like. And that's really, really cool. You can get access to a lot of help and a lot of really smart people. And uh, they can give you a hand and make your recipes much better. So go there, make an account. Um, when you get a little bit better and a little bit more advanced at this process, there's actually great desktop software you can use that will let you manage your recipes and do all that stuff too. You'll be using that too later on. But just to start, the website is perfectly great. It's a stepping stone to your own DIY. So let's talk a little bit about the two different ways that people make DIY at home. And there's no better or worse here. This is just the way you prefer to do things. I've chosen to do it uh, one way just because of the discussions I've had with my girlfriend here in our house and the way we want to do it for us. But literally, both of these ways are fine. I'll just explain it to you. Um, you can either make your DIY e-liquid by volume or by weight. And by volume, all that means is that you're measuring the amount of space in the containers that the stuff takes up. And so you're measuring by droplets and you're measuring on graduated cylinders using pipettes and then pouring in the bottles. Uh, you can be very well doing that and many people just use that method. That's fine. It doesn't affect your mixing or your steeping or any of the other processes. It's just the initial part. The other way that people mix e-liquid is through weight. And that is by putting a scale down and then putting a bottle on it <clears throat> that you're actually going to mix in your final bottle and then you gradually add each ingredient right from their bottles into it and uh, that's the way that I do it here in the house and that's the way we decided to do it uh, and it's because it's a slightly less messy way to do it you end up with less cleanup you only ever have to clean up one thing and that is the um, the utensil that you use to get the nicotine out of the bottle into 
your bottle, which for me is a syringe. Um, and I'm gonna go over the basic supplies here in a minute, so don't be distracted. You'll have a list, and I'll tell you exactly what you need, and this is a very short list. So for now, let's go over that basic list of supplies that I think you need just to get started doing your own DIY liquid. The number one thing for me is the scale. I bought a particular scale by AWS. This was $29 on Amazon, and the thing graduates to a thousandth, I'm sorry, a hundredth of a gram, which is perfect. It has a power adapter so it doesn't go off while you're using it. It comes with a calibration weight so that you know that it's actually measuring the correct amount. And it was just kind of cheap, 30 bucks, cheap. So get one of these. These are great. The other thing you're going to need is some nicotine. The nicotine that I buy is from Wizard Labs or from My Freedom Smokes. Right now I'm using it from My Freedom Smokes. Slightly cheaper at this moment. Uh, it's very important when you buy nicotine to get it from a place that you can verify that they know, or I'm sorry, not they know, but they have purchased it from someone, that they can verify that it was extracted correctly and safely, uh, and that there's a chain of custody that goes along with it. And that does seem to be the case with My Freedom Smokes. They're awesome. Uh, I have the bottle right here. I'll show you. Ding! This came sealed for the towel fruit cap, and I keep this in the refrigerator behind everything where nobody can find it or open it, and I only take it out to do this video and to make DIY, then I put it right back, and you'll see me do that later. Um, in the beginning, you'll buy low concentration nicotine juice. You can buy this in a lot of concentrations, but because nicotine is dangerous and difficult to handle, not difficult to handle, sorry, but because nicotine is dangerous and should be handled carefully, um, it makes perfect sense to buy low concentrations in a small bottle to start because you will go through this and it won't sit there for a year and go bad. And if you touch this with your skin, it's not going to be extremely poisonous. I can touch this and clean it off and I won't get sick. If you're using the higher concentrations, very often, even if it touches your hands, I and mean, you should be using gloves then, um, if it touches your hands, like, you can get sick and that involves nausea and hiccups and vomiting sometimes. And so um, start by buying low concentrations. And then as your confidence rises, then you'll be able to handle more using gloves and some other stuff. Because you might be building or you might be mixing larger amounts that'd be great the third thing you need is vegetable glycerin vegetable glycerin and and sorry not just vegetable glycerin also polypropylene glycol i personally don't use propylene glycol but for mixing juices that are thinner and are used in different kinds of tanks it's useful uh, so i have some obviously um, vg and pg are very inexpensive and you can buy them on Amazon. This brand, Essential Depots, is endorsed by virtually everybody and you can buy it on Amazon. Once you get to be a little bit more sophisticated, a DIY mixer yourself, you can explore, you know, the one or two cheaper places there are, but you can't do tons better than Amazon Essential Depots. I'll have links for all of this stuff down below for you guys to make it easy. Uh, the next thing you need after the scale and the nicotine and the PG is obviously uh, the flavors. And the flavors are purchased from places uh, all over the web. Many people sell them. I personally buy my flavors currently from Bull City Vapors. And they're great and have good prices. Uh, there's a few places you can, and I'm no authoritative, end-all, be-all expert on which place you should go. But um, with um, basic research, other friends can tell you too where other flavors can be purchased. And there's five or more good brands. But today, we're going to start by using some Bull City Vapor, which I've got right here on my table next to me. And we're just going to mix a simple shake and vape ripe strawberry plus DX Bavarian cream. This is actually a flavor that requires some time to steep to taste the best, but it will shake and vape pretty well, and it'll give you an idea of how to get started. I'll just set that down. The very last thing that you've got to have is some way to transfer the nicotine into your final mixing bottle and some bottles, just those two things. For the transferring, you can just use pipettes. This box cost $8.50 on Amazon, and it contains 500 pipettes. They're not fast because nicotine is extremely slow coming out of the bottle because it's thick, but these are cheap, and you can throw them right away. And the other thing you'll need is some simple bottles. You can buy glass, you can buy plastic, you can buy whatever. I recommend buying a very inexpensive set of unicorn bottles or just a set of plastic ones. But I'll give you guys a couple of choices down below. Um, and you can get as fancy as you want. I wouldn't probably as a beginning DIYer. Probably you need a couple of 30 mil bottles and then maybe 
a couple of larger ones later, <clears throat> mostly you're going to need a bunch of 10 mil bottles, 10 or 15 mil bottles. Um, plastic is fine. Uh, okay, so then what we should do is we should get down to the counter and I will show you some of this stuff in action. Okay, we're down here in the kitchen counter and I'm mixing up. I'm just showing you, I set the scale down. I've got a bottle on there. I have a recipe here on my eliquidrecipes.com. It's gonna tell me exactly how much stuff to put in here. And we're just gonna start. It's so super easy this is. We're gonna make 30 mils of this strawberry banana cream and it's gonna be a three milligram strength nicotine. And the, pro the final nicotine, or I'm sorry, the final ratio will be 21% VG, 79% PG. And the reason is that the flavors themselves come in PG. Now I picked up the nicotine and I'm giving it a super duper shake. You need to shake your nicotine up before you use it. It's just one of those things. And the first ingredient is nicotine, and it says that I'm to put in 2.59 grams. That's 8.33%, 2.5 mils in the overall bottle. The weight of this nicotine juice is higher than its milliliters because it's heavier than just water. So I'm using a pipette to suck up this nicotine juice, and it's real slow, but they're really cheap. They come $500 a box, or 500 pieces for a box of for a box and about eight dollars and fifty cents and so it's very inexpensive i'm going to turn the scale on the bottle's on it so it's going to zero out and i'm going to start squeezing this in here out of the pipette till we get to 2.59 grams on the scale you'll notice that the scale is calibrated to grams and that's how we're measuring it it's going to take us a couple of pipettes there's one and the basic procedure is you go ingredient by ingredient and you just squeeze them in here and reset or tear the scale every time. Not very hard. So let's see, we're at one and a half. We're going to 2.59. One thing I like about this scale is that it's very quick to read. It only takes like one second. So if you drop a drop in there, and wait briefly, you'll see that it'll go up. And that's your final measurement. So at the end here, you just want to go a little bit slower. A little bit slower. 2.34. Yeah, oh, we're almost there. Nailed it. Okay, now here is where we get rid of the pipette. And watch my trick. All I have to do is reach over and grab a paper towel, which I'm sure you guys have handy. Empty out the bipet. And then I wrap this entire thing up and I throw it deep into the garbage can. And by the way, for you more advanced guys, you can buy a Sharps trash can on Amazon for about $8. That's a great way to protect pets. We mixed our nicotine. Next I'm gonna put in the vegetable glycerin, this stuff. Now in my case, I've gone ahead and put it into a condiment bottle, which, whoopsie, is a very handy way to do it. Uh, it's only for convenience. Now I reset the scale. And my recipe said 29.76 grams of this is how much we want. So we're just gonna wanna squeeze this. Squeeze gently too, I warn you, because the nozzles on these things tend to curve. You see that little hook on the end? 29.76, 29.76, we're going to make it, easy peasy, well, a little bit more, no problem. Yeah, that's not a big deal. So, VG done. That's our total base. Now we're going to add the flavors. This one calls for ripe strawberry and Bavarian cream. Bavarian cream is a flavor that typically takes a long time to steep, and so it's going to shake and bake a little strange. It'll be good, but um, the longer you leave this, the better it will get. And we're, we'll go over steeping and mixing, or I'm sorry, steeping and waiting here in a moment. 
So my recipe calls for 0.9 grams, 9 tenths of a gram of DX Bavarian cream. That's about 3% of this juice. I'm just gonna squeeze this in there until that says 0.9 grams. And you'll notice that this weight method is nice because there's no, I don't have to move it, uh, transfer anything from any bottles. I love that. Need three. Every drop is about two hundredths itch. Hey, nine. It should be 0.9 out, that's fine. That's perfectly within our tolerances. Uh, and strawberry cream is three grams, which is quite a bit more. That's about 10% mm, of our overall volume. This won't be an award-winning juice or anything, but this just shows you how it is to get started and to make simple flavors. Two point six nine. Show me three. Are we there? Winning. Okay, that's good. Three grams. Okay, that in fact is a bottle of e juice. Now. You take the lid and at least give it a shake. It's kind of cool how in the beginning it stratifies. Oh, can't see because of my hand, but they aren't mixed. The number one way for steeping your juice is waiting. The more time that you give them, the more that they taste, there will be a point where they start to degrade eventually. But the truth is one, two, three weeks, most juices, especially juices with cakes, custards, and other kinds of flavors like that are gonna need time. So in this case, I'm gonna try this on the dripper right away just to see how it is. Turn that off. Okay, we're back from the counter. I put my dripper, it's empty, onto my SME 60, and we're just gonna drip a little bit of this new juice we made into here and see what it tastes like. And I'll talk to you about steeping. Steeping is a process, or is the process that you go through after you've mixed your juice up like we have. There's a few ways to do it physically agitating the juice in any kind of way through foot baths or attaching it to a drill and spinning it, putting it onto a vortex, a scientific vortex mixer. There's a lot of ways. You can shake it like this. A lot of us just use the jerk off technique. Just shake it. It doesn't matter how you do it. This is good. You just need to wait mainly. Another important thing you can do is to use a slight amount of heat and the way that we do that is that every day or so, every second day, maybe even once a week, you can take this and put it into a bath of water that doesn't go over 100, 125 degrees and let it sit there for 20 minutes with the, with the lid open. And that will help to evaporate out any of the hydrocarbons that might have been in here, which is very common in the flavors. And uh, it'll accelerate the steeping process and make the chemicals mix a little bit better. It isn't absolutely necessary. The truth is that if you take enough time, it's fine. Those are just ways to accelerate the process. So, I've just shaken it up. We call this shake and bake. The DX Bavarian Cream is not the kind of flavor that always shakes and bakes very well, but this should be okay. And the more time I leave it, the better it will. Also, just interestingly enough, you'll notice this is this color. This will change color as the nicotine oxidizes and combines, not combines, but oxidizes and reacts with the other flavors inside here. And it'll turn a little bit more of a yellow color. It's kind of cool. But it won't be very much because it's kind of a small amount. 10% of this is strawberry. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. See how it goes. What I'm running here is my old smock, my old smock dripper. And it's got a, uh, looks like 025 running at 2.9 volts. Why 2.9? Doesn't seem like a lot. Ah, there we go, three volts. It's good. You can't taste tons of the cream yet because it's just really not there. It didn't go medicinal, which is nice. Sometimes strawberry flavors can taste, in fact, sometimes a lot of fruit flavors can taste a little bit medicinal when you first put them in there because of just some of the ways that your nose interact with them and the time it takes for them to interact with the PG and the nicotine and other flavors. Let me try again. It's good. It's gonna get better. That's three milligrams. 
And I encourage you to experiment for yourself. This isn't the best recipe by any means at all. My personal recipe is kind of a, it took me a month to, uh, to test it and to get where I like it. And I'm just now starting to give it to friends to see what they want, but it's been a really fun process. And I encourage you guys to get a basic kit like I've shown you here and just start mixing up your own stuff and exchange ideas and have a good time. Um, I want to know what you think too, so I want you guys to tell me your favorite recipes, tell me what you think about the techniques, tell me what you think about the channel, tell me what you think about anything. I don't care. Comment, like, post. I love all you guys and I thank you for tuning in to my global headquarters for vaping. Thanks. I'm going to have some coffee and vape out. Damn, that's pretty good. Thank you.